Our Stupid World with Ed the Sun. Twitter is the place where sanity goes to die, and the corpse attracts a swarm of maggots and flies. That's the buzzing you hear when you go there. Annoying noise from a multitude of pests that are equally at home on a log of crap. For example, last summer a young woman tweeted that she had just been served at McDonald's by a guy who kept staring at her chest and it creeped her out. I felt bad for her, so to lighten things up, I tweeted a joke to demonstrate that what the guy did was wrong and what she experienced wasn't right. Wait, that's the same thing, isn't it? I tweeted, Consider that brief exchange with you reminded him what it felt like to be alive. First ray of light since moved from the fry bin. Now let's take a moment. What was the message you took from that tweet? A, the guy was a loser. B, the guy was a loser. C, the guy was a loser. Or D, all of the above. Morgan's response. Consider that my breasts aren't here to make men feel alive. Fair enough. Smart rejoinder. Still in the same spirit of sarcasm. Or so it seemed. Supporting her assertion that her breasts aren't there to be stared at and keeping it in a lighter vein, I tweeted. No, they're not. Breasts are like toy trains, intended for kids, but invariably wind up the focus of adults. Yeah, the joke can be carbon dated from the Catskills, but the point of it is this. We as adults focus too much on a woman's breasts. So in two tweets, I have supported Morgan's message that it's rude for someone to openly stare at her breasts, and that female breasts didn't evolve to make men happy. We're in solidarity, right? Wrong! Up pops this person, Cocktopus Prime. Her tweet? Invariably, eh? Like you had to invariably objectify Morgan's breasts? Seriously? That's your takeaway from my tweets? Again, a demonstration of the Beavis and Butthead reflex. We don't need TV to entertain us. <laughs> he said anus. So I replied in a gentle, non-confrontational manner. Oh, for fuck's sake, put away your PC police badge and get a sense of perspective, if not humor. That was me being gentle and non-confrontational. Her response? My PC police badge? You asked a woman to stop and think about how her boobs were the highlight of someone's day. Then you compared her body to a children's toy. Put away your misogyny card and go fuck yourself. Okay, let's unpack this fudge. I asked a woman to stop and think about how her boobs were the highlight of someone's day? Did I? Sure, if you take the line in isolation separated from the context provided by the second line. Groucho Marx said, one morning I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I'll never know. Take half of that, and it's Groucho saying that he shot an elephant, admitting to hunting an endangered species. These SJWs operate like owners of car chop shops. They break statements into components so they can use the parts for their own purposes. And the rest of her tweet. Then you compared her body to a children's toy. Did I? Sure, if you're incapable of understanding metaphor. In which case, Shakespeare believed that the Earth wasn't round, but flat with giant curtains on it. And Marvin Gaye sang a song about listening to grapes. Imagery, simile, and metaphor are used every day, and only an idiot takes everything literally. Am I calling Cocktopus Prime an idiot? Well, if the shoe fits, you know where to put it. But Cocktopus's next tweet reveals her perspective. I'm frankly waiting for a nice gendered slur, which I'm sure is coming. Why? I didn't say anything negative about women in my tweets. Just about a cashier at a fast food joint and someone who was being overly politically correct. In Cocktopus's view of the world, dispute with a man must be motivated by his hostility toward women, rather than toward the person's stupidity independent of gender. This is typical of outrage warriors. They treat your statements as choose-your-own-adventure books. Alright, I think I've made my point about how these outrage warriors misuse context to create an argument out of thin air. So you can stop watching here or wait for the bonus content. Hey, look, shawarma restaurant. The back and forths continued, and I was getting bored, so I tried turning the tables. The truth is, I have a hard time imagining a typical guy at McDonald's cash register openly staring at a woman's boobs, especially a modest, unexaggerated pair. So I started thinking, what else would cause someone to look down at a customer's chest area? The autism spectrum. So I tweeted, also, you're missing that McD's hires autistic people who avoid looking people in eyes, so look side or down. They aren't looking at a body part, they're looking away from another one. Now, I wasn't just being a shitlord. Let's look at this for a second. Morgan faced a guy who was staring down past her face. She automatically assumed that he was a pervert ogling her boobs. Would she have jumped to that conclusion if the cashier had been female? Who knows? 
But then the ever helpful Mark jumps in, claiming to be on the spectrum and tweeting, I know that I tend not to look at unfamiliar people in the eye when I speak to them. I'm more likely to look just off to someone's side if I look their way at all. You see, young Morgan chose to assume that the cashier was a creep who made her the victim of sexual objectification rather than considering the distinct possibility that he was on the autism spectrum and couldn't look her in the eye. That's a very ableist attitude, isn't it? As I tweeted, maybe I should have scolded Morgan for assuming he was not autistic. After all, they're making assumptions based on my tweet. Why can't I make them based on theirs? I think that's fair. How about Coctopus? Pardon? You heard it here first. Men stare at your breasts because they're looking away from elsewhere. Feel the sympathy flow. Once again, distorting my message through generalization and showing a distinct lack of any sympathy for people on the autism spectrum. That's a very ableist attitude, isn't it? And her next comment was the cherry on top. You are shifting goalposts. This conversation had nothing to do with the autism spectrum. Yeah, and my initial comment had nothing to do with saying it's okay for men to ogle women's breasts or any other choose-your-own-adventure interpretation you puked onto it. You didn't just move goalposts, you switched stadiums. And then it was time to address the elephant in the room and point out that I'm being lectured about objectifying gendered body parts by Coctopus Prime. And so I tweeted, noticing nobody commenting on Coctopus Prime's name being sexist objectifying. And Coctopus replies, man, this happens every time. What? So it's been pointed out before, and you still continue to make male sex organs the subject of your attempted humor? Zounds! What manner of inverted logic will you use to defend this? Well, she didn't. Instead, she unleashed the dog pack of guys who've been itching to jump in and show how progressive they are. Any of the guys want to take this one? Here's Justin with... You really need to consider the dynamics of the situation. That you're not is evident in your false equivalency re Twitter name. That kind of two coke argument comes off as deflection and desperation. Oh, it does, does it, Justin? It's a two coke argument? Or did you mean two cocks, which is probably what you dream of having in you at the same time? Yes, you're correct, Virginia. There's no way to read into that comment as anything but a juvenile attempt at being insulting and offensive. I offer it in comparison to the joke which started this off, which took some work to turn into an offensive comment. Also, anyone who uses two coke in their tweets makes me want to yank out every hair in their ironic hipster beards. And then David X. Machina comes to the rescue, asking me, aren't you deciding someone is creepy to men for a joke you didn't get? Um, isn't that what Coctopus has been doing to me throughout these entire exchanges? Twitter doth murder irony. Well, to people like Coctopus Prime and her ilk, it all comes down to fuck you if you can't take a joke, and double fuck you if you don't even understand it. I am your humble servant, Ed the Sock. Next week, how right-wingers freak out on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe, otherwise you might miss it. And who knows how your life can continue without it. Our Stupid World with Ed the Sock.